let folks know that the meeting is now currently being recorded. So everyone should see something that pops up on the screen that says recording, as well as the meeting may be um, aired on ACTV's website. We're not quite at forum yet, quorum yet. So um, I don't have to say all of that now. Yeah, but that's okay. Um, okay. All right. Well, thanks, Jen. Thanks for setting us up. We'll see you later. Yep. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Did I make you host? No. No. Yes. Hey, Matt. Well, hello. Here we are. <laughs> um, I'm actually going to. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the um, June 13th meeting of the Amherst Cultural Council. Um, this meeting is being recorded, and so all participants should be aware of that. Um, pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, um, the meeting is being conducted re via remote means. There will be no in-person access for members of the public, but members of the public may access the meeting via Zoom. Um, the link was noticed and paid, placed on the town site um, more than 48 hours in advance of the meeting. Uh, and then if folks have any trouble accessing the meeting uh, in real time, they can view it on the town's YouTube channel as well. Um, and any we can handle any kind of uh, technical difficulties that arise as they, as they come up um, over email. So I'll go around and we'll just do a quick audio check to make sure everybody can um, hear us and be heard. And I'll just read off my screen. Um, Eleanor? Yes. Leah? Yes. Uh, Robin? Yes. And Rachel? Yes. Great. And so we're at quorum with five and I, I suspect some folks will be able to join us in a little bit. Um, and I will pull up our agenda we this this should be I think it should be an interesting meeting uh hopefully we will stay within the 60 to 90 minute definitely within the 90 minute range and possibly within the 60 um but we definitely have some things to discuss and I want to thank Rachel and Rachel we will um we will post an updated agenda into the um onto the website so that we we include this item on there but um a discussion about uh i think a discussion about the outreach efforts that you know every cultural council is required to make outreach efforts and um we do so through our public meetings every year but um obviously there are more systematic ways of doing that and we're always trying to increase public participation in our process so i really just want to thank rachel for doing the research on that um, and Rachel, if you're ready to jump right in on, on some of that right now, I think it'd be great to just sort of, uh, you asked some really good guiding questions and I, and I clicked on, um, several of those links and I saw there's some diversity, uh, go ahead, Leah. Um, do we have, um, did you email out, um, the agenda or should I just write up notes? Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, I, I I will share the agenda with you. Um, now the, the agenda is posted, but I may not have emailed it out, and that's my fault. I, I apologize. I'm, oh, got it. Sorry, I usually get it from you. No worries. Okay. No, it's it's my fault. I'm a, I'm a little bit out of pocket today, to be totally honest with you. So, um, let me see. So June is definitely like hard to be doing things on time. <laughs> I've been I, struggling. I was going to ask if anybody wanted to, to um, talk about potentially canceling our next our, our July meeting. That might be a good idea. July is usually. Kind of a dead month for us um but we're so busy these days and we have so many interesting things going on i hate to outright cancel it but leah i'm gonna i'll, I'll create a um a, a minutes document off the agenda and share that with you in, in like two minutes in like 30 seconds hopefully um yeah i already have a minutes document but oh okay oh okay yeah sorry um well in that case i will uh, I, I have not emailed it out, so I, I can. I think I think you're good. Just to just to track us as we go, um, because I neglected to add Rachel's uh, discussion to the minutes, but I will update them. Um, I will update them, and we'll we'll get a, an updated set of minutes posted as well. Um, and I also don't think that we're going to necessarily take any binding action uh, on this survey right here, right now. So I think we'll be we'll be um, within. The open meeting law constraints. Um, so, I, I did also send out a, a set of minutes for approval. Um, if we want to 
approve those real quick. We could also do that. Yes, I see. Um, Eleanor nodding her head. Um, does anybody want to make a motion to approve last month's minutes? Motion to approve May's minutes. And a second. No second. Okay, we'll do a quick roll call. Leah? Approve. I'm a yes, and Rachel? Yes. Okay, great. Um, all right, so the minutes are approved. Um, and I will send those along to Angela for posting. And thank you so much, Leah, for being on top of those. They really look great, um, as always. Okay, so so Rachel, if you, are, do you, do you want to discuss now, or do you want to um, wait? Till... Sure. Okay. Yeah, because I'm right. gonna That's I'm gonna good. have to go at seven o'clock anyway. So okay, uh, perfect. So I don't know if all of you had a chance to look at the email that Matt forwarded um, that you know I had drafted. Few weeks ago, it's interesting because I went through the list of the um, sample surveys that MCC for, uh, shared with us, and um, of the ones that I mean, I looked through all of the ones that um, they shared and picked out the few that I thought would be most useful for our purposes. And you'll notice that um, the funding levels of the, all the ones that I chose are actually quite different from ours. Right. And I, I so I guess that's not necessarily a reflection of how much money um, local councils are allocated, but like how much thought they put into how to use that money or how to allocate that money. So um, I thought their questions were all, um, you know, could could be helpful to us. And I and I listed in each case how many questions they had in their survey. Right. As the outline. I don't know if you saw that part in, in, in the email. So um, I don't know if I should share screen or not, or Matt, I don't know if you could, do, do you think it's better if we just talk generally about the um, the, the categories of information that we, that I, I posed um, to see if we want all of those types of information and to what extent, to, to what, um, you know, how granular do we want to get? Um, so, I don't know if it's better Let's, to just start generally. I think we should start with the categories. I think that's that's a smart okay. way to go about it and okay. find out what you know what do we want to know, and then right. from there. Um, and yeah. I, I mean, I'll, I'll sh just say personally, I I really think so. The four categories that um, Rachel suggested were awareness, so awareness of us, of our grants, and and granting. Um, sorry, Rachel, you, you go ahead. I don't mean to. I don't mean to take it over. No, no, it's fine. I mean, yes, because I don't. I don't have my email in front of me, but I can. Okay, I, I'm gonna go I, off. So I have. Um, I have it up. If you want me to read from okay. it. Okay. So um, let's see. And then there was the. So there's awareness. Um, because do people know? I mean, they, they might come across the events, but do, do they know that ACC um, has a role, or sometimes a, a kind of a very major role in funding these um, programs? And um, let's see. And then how, do, if so, how do they find out about, you know, where do they get their information? Um, and perceptions of funding priorities. I put perceptions because we as a council know what our funding priorities are, but what what do the residents, but what, what do they think about how, you know, we prioritize, right? So I think, um, maybe you disagree with 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 that approach, but I think I think it's more like understanding what people actually think or um, about how we make decisions um, and where our priorities lies for funding. And then um, the the last two categories are really about the respondents themselves. So who are they um, um, in terms of their demographics, and also to what extent do they participate um, or uh, in in the events and programs that ACC um, funds, so I suppose when it comes to participation, there there are two levels to it. One is just how much do these respondents um, take part generally. It doesn't matter who's funded the events, right? So whatever local programs are available, regional programs, and then um, two, are they are they specifically interested in what ACC is doing in terms of programming. So that's that's just, maybe that's less relevant, but it's more like, what, what are they participating in? So those are the four categories I came up with, just gen generally speaking. And um, so maybe people can 
just we can have a discussion about um what we think about that and and just just so you know the um i asked the first two categories of questions in terms of awareness and perception just to, to have a sense of do the residents who are whose tax monies are helping to fund ACC's budget are are they aware? Or do they know? Are they are they, are they in line with what we think we're trying to do? If that makes sense. And if not, is how do we address that from you know the the sources or the channels that would be most effective? So it's really I think at, um, it's really at the core about communications. Um, and, and making sure everyone is kind of on the same page to to that extent. So please um, jump in with your ideas and thoughts. Is uh, just one thing. I think it's funded through the lottery, not through taxes. So. Right, I just meant that, you know, in terms of what um, people think, like how are we directing those funds, I should say, right? Yeah. So I, I will say, I mean, I think it's helpful for me to, I really appreciate you, first of all, just doing the research and then putting these categories out there because, you know, um, it, it does both things for me. It helps, it helps me think about what do I wanna know? And it also gives me a sense of what other people are doing. Um, and, and looking through these, and I'd have to go back and reopen some of them to figure out which ones are which, but, um, my, my, my personal interest lies mostly in, um, guidance around, well, I guess a couple areas. One is, one is what kinds of things do people want that they're not getting, because that helps us think about our local grant, um, activities. So I'm, I'm in the North, the North borough one, and they have a question, the arts and cultural programs or services that are of most value to me. Like I think, and then community-wide performances, art exhibits and programs, educational programs, programs towards the elderly and adults, programs towards children. Like that to me is really nice because it's a, um, what does the community want and need question? And I think that's something that we, with our local funds, you know, can certainly, it, as we, we've, you know, we distribute a, a slate of grants and then we can look and say, okay, what didn't we hit from the community values? And things that we didn't hit from the community values, we can then um, find ways to fund those through through local funds. Um, so I, I personally, I, I'm, I'm very interested in that and sort of a community values type question. And then obviously the other thing that I'm most interested in is um, are just elevating our profile for, for prospective applicants, you know, diversifying and expanding our pool of applicants um, and just just asking folks if there's anything we can, the problem is that the people who fill out the survey are the ones who are already, you know, seeing the activity. So I don't want to overly invest in that, but, but I think it's still worth asking, what more can we do to be a public face? Like we're going to do Juneteenth uh, this weekend. Robin, thank you for um, stepping up to help with that. And, and uh, um, excited about that. And I'm excited that, you know, that we're able to help support Juneteenth financially as well. Um, but we'll have a booth there and we can be doing some, you know, public facing uh, promotion at, at that time as well. Um, but I guess those are my two big questions. You know, what does the community want? And then how do we, you know, how can we be more accessible to them? Um, Leah, please. Um, I was going to ask, um, I have like two quick things kind of in the like, how do you send out a survey? like? where how are these places like what email lists are they using because it feels like we can't use the like cultural council because like if we want to find out how many people are aware of it like the people on our list would probably be aware of it so I'm wondering how they find this database to email and then um I also really liked one of the councils I forget which one had like a new place it was like an optional question and it was like we're still looking for new members here's um if you're interested just put your email in and I thought that was great because it will probably end up being a little bit more skewed towards interested people and I thought that was like really smart to use that platform to look for new members so that might be a nice thing to put like at the end excellent point I don't know please yeah I well I really agree I think I'm 
you know, interested in accessibility and like what people are interested in engaging with. Um, I just wanted to note one question that I really liked on the Northboro one that I think, I don't know, I, I can see, I can see a world in which we wouldn't want to include something like that because I think it is kind of optional and it makes the survey longer, but they asked like, what do you think gives our town like a unique character um, and like kind of what defines it? And I just was really moved by that. I was like, that's a very, um, just a touching thing to ask people like what they see in the town. And then like, we could then think about how we want to incorporate that or how we want to reflect that in the events and like the artists that we support. Um, but I just loved that kind of zoomed out, like, what do you like about this town and what do you see in this community um, that's like unique and meaningful to you? So I, I liked that they weren't just doing super specific cultural council stuff, but I could also see us wanting to kind of save that for another avenue. Um, another time but I just enjoyed that a lot. Rachel did uh, Northboro post their results anywhere? No I included the results where were available and because the links um, from the MCC were for the last fiscal year's um, survey so some of them by the time that I was uh, sending the email to you and Julianne for this meeting were already not available for viewing. Um, so no, the, the, I, I was not, I didn't see it, but, um, but I think Rockland posted their results. So you can see how certain cu cultural councils are very much on top of these things and very proactive about, um, you know, getting this information out and updating it. Um, and then what I thought was interesting is that Falmouth for the amount of, um, grant allocation they have, how detailed they got with their surveys. And I thought, oh, wow, like, so some people, I wonder, you know, what the response rate would have been. So if, um, like, I, and I agree with all of you that I found Northboro's um, survey really interesting how they did it. Um, and so if there were like one or two that um, we think are worth consulting in more detail, I'd be happy to just contact those people and ask them, you know, to say to you, would you mind, you know, sharing what you found was useful about the survey or, you know, the results or if they would have any guide, you know, suggestions for us doing something like this. But, you know, that's that's just just a thought that just occurred to me. So, Leah. I was gonna add on, I also, oh, sorry, wait. No, please go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, I really liked fall, fall mouth survey, especially like, when they went into demographics, they asked about like, they said, what's your connection to the arts and cultural life? Like, are you consuming? Are you an artist yourself? Are you like a volunteer? And I thought that was interesting. And then also asking when they said, how would you rate it? Um, like one is like getting stronger and one's like getting weaker. So like asking about how they think the trajectory has been, especially for like longer residents, like, because if they think it's like, okay, we might want to see if they thought it was bad, but getting better or like good, but getting worse. I don't know. I thought that was like an interesting angle to ask the question. Yeah, I think the, um, I, the reason I, I put in that category in, in our, for, for ours about demographics is I, I think it, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what the current profile is but for Amherst, right? Because the, the population is shifting. Um, so it, it would be interesting to, to, to have a sense of that. Um, and we could, you know, if we wanted to, we could, we could get more detailed about the demographics. Um, so it's really up to us how we wanna structure a questionnaire and and Leah to answer your earlier question about how the survey would get um distributed I think early on when the time when Mindy sat in our meeting uh recently um Mindy Dom um and she I think she had suggested um contacting is it Jennifer Moyston or Brianna at the town council um to help us with the distribution of the questionnaire and and I think the timing of it could they they would be certainly in a good position to advise us on when and how to distribute it right um and they would have a a, a broader reach of of the town as a whole obviously um and i had you know raised this thing in passing last time about well if we have the social media accounts um for acc 
we could um, send questions that way, but I don't know what the response rate would be and how many people would see it in the first place. So um, how do you want to move this discussion forward? Like, do we, do we agree on the categories of information that Matt just highlighted as well? Um, and I think Eleanor supported um, and go from there. Is it too soon to do a draft of the questionnaire that, you know, for, for our purposes? No, I, I, I think that's exactly where I was going to suggest um, we go is um, a draft. And, you know, I mean, this being Amherst, I think we, well, you always have to be cautious of survey fatigue. And I, I agree with, um, I think it was Leah who pointed out some of these were quite, quite lengthy. Um, and so, you know, one thing about Google Forms is you can choose whether you want to do multiple pages or a single page, you know, and I would advise a single page. I know people have different opinions about that, but I think a single page for me as a completer, I like to see how far, you know, how long is this going to take me? And if it's, you know, fewer than between five and 10, I'd say items. Um, I, th I think you can get a decent response rate out of that. And um, but but yeah, I, I mean, Rachel, if you're willing to, um, you know, take and I, I would I would also be, but just because you've done the research and I think you've synthesized a lot more than any of us, um, if you'd be willing to um, just sort of put together a few draft items and they don't even have to be complete, but maybe just sort of the prompts and then we could all brainstorm at our next meeting. I I would love to be able to distribute this. Um, I'd say like at least a month before our, our grant cycle opens, um, because that way we can maybe gain some exposure on potential applicants. And also it can give us some guidance when we go into grant making around, you know, what are we, um, it, it may actually help inform what we're looking for. Um, so. Ideally, yeah, that that is that, that that is the case. And I think that was one of the reasons that I think MCC encourages local cultural councils to do these surveys in the first place. So, I mean, I'm fine to just start, I could, I could make a template of a Google form with sample questions or just questions um, that you all can comment on. And I think I agree that it's, it's, it's probably most realistic to just do a single page form to, you know, because I think that would have a better chance of getting more responses. And, and I think the key, I don't know if you all agree, but I feel like whenever I get these surveys, um, I'm more likely to complete it right away if the questions posed to me don't require a huge amount of thought. Um, because if, I, if I'm replying to a survey that I, I think would be useful to whoever's asking questions, and I want to, to give them the information that they want, but if it's going to take me too long to like put that information together and, and give it to them, then... I might just set it aside for the time being. I don't know. I'll get back to it. It depends on how important it is, right? To to me, to to actually complete this. And I don't know how important it's going to be to most people to complete a survey from the cultural council. So, um, so the, the the easier we can make the responses, the better. So I'm gonna just use that as a guiding principle. If you all all agree with that approach. I think that's that's a great approach, and I really appreciate you saying that about keeping the not being too existential with the questions. Um, although at this, I also like, as Leah said, sort of trying to tease out the you know underlying values too. But yeah. I think you can you can do that with a couple open response questions at the end, and people exactly. can check how much they want to provide. Um, but no, I yeah, think it's up I, to them. yeah, yeah, it's up to them, right? Exactly, exactly. Well, thank you, really. I really, oh, please, Robin, yeah. I don't suppose there's any way to add a one page survey with when the excise tax bills go out or the census or anything like that. Just, I doubt it, but you know how they're adding a registration for voting with other things, like it gets put in with other things and stuff. Just it's, it doesn't hurt to ask. You know, right. I, there might be some competition in terms of a paper survey to circulate something, and that might be a more involved process, but it doesn't hurt to ask because we're going to be asking anyway for them to help distribute it electronically. So we might as well say, right. and we'd be happy to provide it 
in print if you'd like that instead. So, you know, I, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, I think it's certainly worth asking. I agree. Um, because if it's put into a communications, like a town-wide communications, it um, it depends on how many other items are are in that communication, right? It could just get, get lost in the shuffle, but but it will help us reach everybody. Um, so Matt, do you want to ask whoever's at the town or do you want me to ask? Cause I'm not sure exactly who I should be asking. Um, well, let's get our, I think we should probably get a little bit further along in developing okay. our survey. Draft. Um, yeah. But Wouldn't Angela be the person to talk to first? Yeah. Yeah. Person mm -hmm. Always had a baby. But I think. <laughs> I think Matt, what would be um, probably worthwhile doing is just mentioning if it, you know, if it's Angela, the, if Angela's the person, then it might be worth mentioning to her. Just say we're we're thinking we're planning to do this. When um, might be a good time to, to just just to, so she has it kind of on her radar. Yeah, and, yeah. I'll, I'll be happy to reach. I, I'll probably okay. reach out to Paul as well and just sort of you okay. know get. Sure. He's, He's a good thought partner and he's he's supportive of this um of, of okay us. so so do you want to just ask them and just or just tell them that with we're we're thinking or planning to do this and so that they have it in mind of course and i i mean oh. i can i promise you i mean brianna's been great about press releases and helping us circulate stuff so i they they'll definitely mobilize to help us with it um and we'll just have to but i agree it's a good idea to get their advice in terms of timing so right so i'll go ahead and um put together a draft or a template um, survey for you all to comment on. So procedural, procedure wise, Matt, yeah. there's the, is it okay if I send it to all of you or do I need to send it to you and Julianne to distribute to the rest of us? How does that work in terms of your meeting laws or whatever else? <laughs> My, so, <laughs> well, we really just, we can't conduct public business over email. That's kind of where it, where it breaks down a little bit. So um, I think it's it's fine to circulate a draft to to everybody. Yeah, to everybody. Um, but it'd probably be better if, to just send it to, to Julianne and me, and, and then okay, because we, we would then circulate it to everybody, and we'd also post it for our next meeting. Basically, that's kind of I think it's right. just you know the materials have to be publicly available at, at all times. I'm sorry, but, I'm gonna have to um, set Freddie up with something, and I'll be right. I will be right back. Sure. Um, so I guess. Okay, so I will send the draft to, I guess, I don't know if he completely answered my question because presumably between the time I create the original template and the time we actually post it for the town um, meeting is we'll, we might have some discussion or something or or is that not allowed? I don't know, but um, but hopefully we could, you all can, you know, add and, and revise and edit the form before our next meeting, right? Or at least have a chance to look at it. I don't know. We'll see what Matt and Julian say about how it work. It would work. And do you think one optional question at the end would be sufficient, or do there do there need to be maybe another one? Like, I would think one. Sorry, okay. next off. No, 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 no. Because yeah, because I just want yeah, to. Yeah, I, I think I think almost like as my, I agree as minimalistic as possible, and I do think like. This doesn't have to be our only survey esque thing, you know. Like I, I think in the future we could do something where we're more trying to distill like the values of people or like what they value about the town or that kind of thing. Um, but I think we could potentially do that through something else. Like I, I think we should prioritize getting like as many responses as possible for this one. Is what I would think. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Um, well, again, Rachel, I can't thank you enough. And um, I, I think this is really, you know, this is something that we needed to get stronger in. And I'm just so happy that you've taken the lead on on helping us because I think the community participation aspect, both in terms of our membership um, and also in terms of, of grantees, you know, that's that really is what we're, we're here for. That's our job. Um, so thank you. Sure. And on that note, just because I'm sure folks are wondering, we we were supposed to have um, some interviews this week, but June schedules are already starting to get a little crazy. So it sounds like we're going to have interviews at the end of the month for 
um, for additional slots. So if anybody was wondering, we will definitely keep you posted as, as that gets closer to uh, reality. So how many um, oh, oh, go, people are go ahead, interested? Go ahead, Robin. People are applying and are interested? I don't know. I, I haven't. Um, oh. That stuff comes to us pretty pretty late in the process. I haven't seen any lists actually. Like we, you know, really they they set up the interviews and then we usually get the um, the CAF forms like the, a day or two in advance. Just because there, you know, there's a lot of back and forth between Paul and Angela and the prospective people. Some people filled out this form, you know, two years ago, and they're like, "Why are you call? You know, why are you still calling me?" So so they they have to kind of weed through find find folks who are interested. Um, so they, I know they're working on it. They're also a little short staffed uh, in, in town hall, you know, no surprise. Um, so, okay. So I wanted to move on. All right, to... Matt, before we move on to the to other <clears throat> business, I just wanted, before I forget, I want to mention to all of you, um, mm -hmm. if you go to any events yourself, yourselves, um, and you know how there's always advertising somewhere on, at the venue, it's like, you know, sponsors of, you know, like a, whatever a sign and then they'll have all the sponsors and whatever yeah. Else. yeah right posted and if you if we all could just maybe look to see whether the, somewhere on that public um advertising board or whatever signage there's somewhere there's a qr code that um um that would as, as, actually lead people to a very short survey about that event itself like, how did you find out about this? And, you know, like a three question thing. I'm, I'm not saying that that um, it is, exists already, but I'm just curious um, whether a mechanism has been put in that place. And I will ask a question to Ms. J, our contact, right, MCC, to see if they're already doing something like that. Is that everything, you know, every time somebody, every time an event is happening, there is that mechanism for people to respond um, through through some kind of questionnaire, and which would help MCC collect data as well. So, um, I, I, so if you that, have that doesn't happen, that, are you asking if it, ha it MCC does not have that? Okay. All right. Well, maybe that's interesting. Okay. I will ask them. Have they? You know what they want to do that or not? Because I think I have been going to events where at the end. There's always like, please fill out a response to this, right? And I'm sure you've seen that too. So that's a, that's yeah, a broader. We, well, I'm not sure if we're, it, we could certainly create a QR code with the link to the survey you're talking about. And yeah, that's for our, that's for our survey, but the, I'm talking about kind of at the other end, once whatever programs have happened, that's more of like a, a response thing. So it's, it's not directly related to our survey. I just, um, I was just curious whether you've noticed something like that where it's used as a as a way to collect information about participation. Anyway, so that's that's a tangent. Okay, I'm done. Okay, all right. Um, okay, thank you. Yeah, and again, thank you very much for for this work. It really is super super important. Um, so the other things I think are more well, I don't know. So so fall block party planning. Um, I just pulled, I just opened, speaking of surveys, the survey a minute ago, and um, we've had eight folks respond that they're interested in performing at the fall block party. Um, two of those eight indicated like a smaller booth type setup, which remember that was the thing Gabrielle needed to figure out how they would pull that off. Um, we had about 21 indicate interest in the spring block party. Um, that was with two or three email queries. So I'm, I will send out another email query tomorrow. Um, but I do think we need to, well, actually, we don't have to close it anytime super soon. But, but you know, at some point, we'll have to close it and say, this is the list of interested parties and turn that over to the bid and let them, you know, um, run with it. But I just want to give you that update that we have eight responses. I sent out the survey, I think, the day after our last meeting, or maybe a couple of days after our last meeting. So um, it's out there in the ether. And um, I guess I would just say if you if you interact with any grantees, please you know please promote it. Remind them about that this is happening. Um, we haven't like put a press release out yet uh, on this, and um, you know I'd like to, but I want to. I think I think the goal would be for the fall block parties press release to 
include this and they're trying to they, they just got all their summer music stuff out like this week so my guess is they're going to start turning their attention to towards promoting the fall you know in a couple of weeks that's probably my my best guess so and then um eleanor and cody and leah i i don't want to ask this question but i have to ask are you are you with us until what september I don't know. I think it might be really hard to be doing college and also be doing immersive stuff. But I also. Oh yeah. Oh, I know. I know. I, <laughs> That's I what I was asking. I mean, it's September. I, yeah. Last. I want to. Yeah. I want to come back for the fall block party though, and the spring. I feel like I'll come back for that, and I can Good. work a table. <laughs> but I'm also I'm reaching out to a bunch of like teachers like music teachers art teachers history teachers um in hopes that kind of like the same thing that happened to me will happen but I'm also doing a little bit I'm like writing kind of like like what the council like kind of looks like in hopes that like like if someone is like oh yeah, I do basketball and it's October through January every day. Then they'll be like, hmm, maybe this wouldn't be a good role. Like I'm expanding a little bit more on that, so. Okay, yeah, no, that's great. I really, we really appreciate that. Um, but so I think I'll just put Eleanor sure. and Cody, I know, or have volunteered to sort of help Gabrielle get get stuff together. Cause I, I mean, Leah, your name came up at our last meeting, yeah. but I, was like, I don't think she's going to be <laughs> a part of that, part of that crew. Yeah. So, um, so. Um, okay. Well, I would so, love to like if there's like a table, I'll sit at it. <laughs> I think if you come back for the fall block party, you should walk the street with your friends and enjoy it and come say hello to us. But um, you are free. You will be free of us for you know to our to our great. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, so I, I think you know I, I'll send out one more uh, or I'll send out a nudge this week to our to our grantees um and then eleanor i'll reach out to, i'll reach out to you and cody about maybe we get a zoom session with gabrielle just it helps for momentum just sort of to you know connect and and suss things out talk it through a little bit yeah perfect sounds good so matt that, how many vacancies are we looking at yeah okay um three. so rock go ahead what three i think so um, we have, yeah, we have Toby's and then Robin's and then Leah in September. And I think we're right now we're sort of actively pursuing those, the two like immediate ones, but obviously we've let Paul and Angela know that, that we'll have a third as well. Um, but I think, I think realistically speaking, we'll probably go into the fall with, with a vacancy. Um, and my goal would be to get, you know, the council full for the grant cycle. You know, that's, um, that's always the goal. But if it doesn't happen, it's okay. You know, we can get five. Um, anyway, uh, looking at, and then I, I will just say this publicly in case, you know, in case anybody, we don't have any um, attendees, but, you know, in case anybody watches the meeting or if, or if you're talking to folks, the um, CAF, the the um, Citizen Application, for, oh, I shouldn't have said it. There's a CAF, if you Google CAF Amherst, it's the first thing that comes up. It's the council application form um, and, it is oh community. I'm sorry, community application form, um, and it literally is a one click, and you're in and you're in the pool. So please, if you know of anybody who's interested, we we are um, recruiting. Um. So then the last thing, the last substantive thing, because I don't have any grants updates. That, so, so far, that's been quiet and smooth. Um, the last thing of substance is is Juneteenth, and that's that's just a super exciting event and. Even if you won't be able to volunteer, if you happen to be in town or adjacent to town at all, it's definitely worth it to zip over and check out um, Juneteenth on the Common. It, it starts at noon and really gets going, I'd say probably two or three, um, but it's it's a wonderful event. And um, I did get an email from Jen today, yesterday, asking what we needed in terms of table. So we'll have a table and a tent and two chairs set up. Um, and then I will print, um, I, I will print just some copies of our website, frankly, just, you know, to give folks a, a feel of what we do, um, something to hand to put in people's hands. And I don't want to make any promises because she's not here, but Julianne was going to do a little bit of background research on potentially getting 
some swag printed up. We have a really great logo. Um, and it just dawned on me the other day, like, why is our logo not plastered? All I would totally wear like clothes with our logo. It's, it's a really nicely done thing. So she's working on it. I don't know if it's going to be, I doubt it'll be ready for Juneteenth, but I, but that's one hope is, you know, let's, let's increase public or um, visibility that way. That, and, yeah, I was going to suggest that and how to get the word out. And then I thought, no, oh, no, but maybe yeah. aren't the way, but maybe they are. Hey, we are a stylish bunch and I think we're trendsetters. <laughs> and if people see us wearing this gear, they will be more inclined to join. Uh, that's my you can that's use right. discretionary funds. That's <laughs> It'd be a great it use of our discretionary funds. Yeah. Yeah, it's kosher. It's, that's that's the heart of administrative stuff, right? Um, so I, I, so I will go ahead. Go ahead, please. Yeah. No, I was just saying that we'll add to the survey that you can win a free T-shirt. <laughs> yeah. By answering this survey. <laughs> oh, that's a great idea. I know. I was. I was actually wondering about a giveaway. Yeah. Mm. Um, I, I did ask Jen to confirm um, which, because you know our additional funds are the thing that allowed her to book her headliner, who is Divinity Rocks, um, and actually that's at one, so that's that's not late. Say, yeah, it starts earlier. Yeah, um, and I don't know. Well, and probably doesn't. We don't need to know how you know how much that what was, but the twenty five hundred that we pitched in from festivals and projects certainly um, helped Ooh. there. That's a good thing. Um, and then I, I I will share this that um, on sort of this this festivals and projects grant the timing of it was really funky. I don't know if you all remember, but like we submitted the application and then um, we didn't find out about about the awards until April. It was like it was like nine months before we found out about the awards, and then the actual contract came to us very like we had six weeks before <laughs> before the money had to be spent that we actually got the contract. Um, and so this year, really having, you know, having been through all that stuff, I wasn't paying close attention to the dates and the due date for the festivals and projects came last week. There was a last minute reminder that said this thing is, is open right now. Mm -hmm. um, and so I consulted with Julianne and, and the town and I, you know, and I, I just went ahead and I put in for Juneteenth again. Um, and, and my thinking there was that I would, obviously I would have preferred to have had a cultural council discussion about it it just totally slipped right past me um and so my thinking was that you know if we as a council feel differently if there's energy moving towards the spring block party we really need those funds to be applied there we can always amend that grant we learned that this year that it can be amended um but i just felt like juneteenth it you know it hits so many of our um, core priorities and it is truly a town sponsored event um and i just i didn't want the i just didn't want the money to go you know, un untaken. So I just, I just went for it and, and um, figured, you know, apologize later kind of a thing. And and if we want to, if we want to, you know, discuss further, once we find out if we got the award, then certainly we we can, and we can amend if, if folks feel a strong way about it. Thank uh, you for doing that, Matt. Yeah, no, you're welcome. Um, and that, that's really all we had on the agenda um, for, for tonight. So um, if I'm going to staff, which day are we talking about? Saturday, not Monday? Or are we talking about Monday? Because it starts on Monday. So we're talking about Saturday, right? For oh, oh, for Juneteenth. Yeah, yeah. The, right, the official, no, the, um, hang on. The official, <laughs> yes, no, yes, no. Uh, the official Juneteenth event, yes, is Saturday. Saturday. Okay. And so the town or Jennifer or Angela, whoever's going to make sure that it'll set up. That's one thing I can't do is really set up stuff um, wherever it's going to be. And then I'll just sit yeah. someone will bring over. Uh, if we have materials, someone will bring that or. Yep. Oh, I'll be there. Like uh, I'll yeah. figure it out. Yep. I'll be there. I'll probably have, you know, little ones in tow. Yeah. Well, that's fine with me. <laughs> um, no, that would be great. So it starts at noon. So be there like 11 or? So the, Jen's email says um, the tables will be set up by 10 and it's first come first choice of spots as people arrive at different times. 
Um, I don't, I don't really have no idea how many tables are going to have or anything. Um, I, I, yeah, I think. It's not a very big place. I, I will, I will buzz over. I'll buzz over at 10 with the materials. I have to, I have a, um, this is more information than anybody needed to know. I have a preschool gymnastics class at 1130. Um, <laughs> so I can be there from 10 to 1130. I'll go down and get that set up and then I'll be back up for the headliner and, and, um, all that. So Robin, if you, if you can cover from 1130 to 1230, that'd be perfect. Oh, sure. Or, or beyond, but that, that, that's the gap right. in my opinion. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no kids to be ten minutes. This is so cute. Um, okay, that sounds good. And I think the headliner is going to bring in a lot of people. Yeah, I feel really good that we were able to make that happen. Yeah, that's kind of good. And I did ask. I mean, this is such a last minute thing. She had already created a lot of her materials, but I, I asked her to make sure that you know we use, a, you know, we that she used the cultural council logo, you know. Yeah. And, and give attribution. I mean, that's that's a, that's actually a requirement for yes. for the state mass cultural council attribution. Yes. So I'll make sure we'll make sure that happens. Okay. All right. Well, if there's no further business, I hope everybody continue. Oh, um, shout. Personally, I kind of like just having a regular monthly meeting, even if it's quick, especially with the survey question emerging. But shall we just cancel the July? The July meeting, just given folks are going to be tied up. I'll second that motion. <laughs> okay, why don't we take July off and then we'll plan to reconvene second Tuesday in, in August. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all so very much. Thank you. Bye. Everybody. Thanks. Bye, Bye, everyone. Take care. Saturday. So is Julian